I'm Josh Council here for FX Warehouse and today we're going to be doing a White Walker makeup application. So I'm going to be teaching you how to uh, apply our White Walker face and neck. Um, so before we start there's a little preparation we have to do and I'm going to go through all of the stuff that we're working with today so that you can uh, see what we've got and uh, then we'll uh, get started. So. This is going to be using the White Walker makeup kit from FX Warehouse. So these are the things that it comes with. Um, some of this stuff is not included, but I'll go over everything anyway. So we've got a small little, small little pack of brushes that it comes with, which are great. They're little disposable brushes, so you don't have to worry about getting glue or Pax paint or anything on them. Uh, we've got some contact lenses. These are not included, but they are quite. Uh, quite vital for this makeup as anybody who watches the TV show Game of Thrones knows I always have blue eyes so that's pretty pretty important you can also buy those at FX Warehouse um, we have 99% isopropyl alcohol we have a few different colors of Pax paint here a white, a blue, pale blue um, a really intense blue and a grey uh, We've got three different types of rubber mask grease. We've got white, blue, and grey. We have some crepe hair. We're going to need to prep that because uh, if we just use it straight out of here, it's, uh, well, it goes kind of frizzy and weird. So we'll, I'll show you guys how to prep that in a minute. That's usually done the night before. A uh, bit of powder puff, some sponges, some foam latex wedges. We've got some powder for setting our rubber mask grease, um, some bond off for removing the makeup, some prose glue. I threw in some Q-tips myself, and then there are some gloves. Now these gloves, my hands are too big for these, so I'm going to be using different gloves. But anytime you're working with packs, you want to wear some gloves because uh, getting it off your hands is kind of crap. So we also have some extra things here. I've got a couple of. Uh, couple of disposable chip brushes, you can buy these just from any hardware store, they're you know, like 65 cents or something, they're very very cheap. We've got some uh, contact lens solution, some hairspray, and some scissors. And I also have a disposable wax paper palette that I've just cut up into strips. So that way I can just throw it away and not have to worry about cleaning it. And uh, I'll also be using my my glue brush here. Although you can use one of these, but uh, I'm just kind of partial to this one myself. And I think that's everything. So let's get this prepped here. So you want to pull it, pull it open. You'll see that it's all kind of braided in around these these uh, strings. So you want to take them out. Okay. Now this crepe hair, it's actually made from wool. It's made from many, many, many tiny little strands of wool. So they're not full lengths of, of hair, um, but that's also very, very good because it gives us really good volume. So we're going to dunk this in, this is just water, it's just, just plain tap water that I've put in this cup here, expressly for the purpose of this, I'm not going to be drinking it afterwards. Wring it out, so you want it just kind of damp, and then we're going to find something hard, I'm just going to use this, and we're going to just wrap it around it, and then tuck it under and we're going to leave that overnight so once that's done I took the liberty of preparing some already now if you do it really really tight it's going to come out kind of like this where it's very straight it's going to be very very straight if you do it kind of loose it's going to come out kind of like this where it's still got a little bit of a kink to it and I think that that's the one that I want to go with today. It's just a little bit of a kink because we want it to have a little bit of a curviness to it. Okay, so we don't need that right now because I've got this one. So let's get started. Alrighty, so here's Noah. He's going to be our model. And uh, we took the liberty of getting those contact lenses in beforehand. Sometimes it can be problematic. It wasn't. He was a pro at it, but uh, didn't want to waste time. So uh, 
So we're all ready to go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some of the prosate adhesive here, and we're going to, I'm just going to put it onto my palette. Um, some people like to put it in a cup. Um, I tend to like to just put it straight onto a onto my palette and then just work off there. That way it's always fresh. Sometimes if it's sitting in the cup for too long, it gets a little funky and and uh, there's not a big fan of that. So. so the first thing we're going to apply is the neck. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to put a stripe right down the middle. And uh, this is going to do what's called anchoring the piece. And we always anchor from the center of the prosthetic. Head down a little bit. More, more. Okay. So you want to have them have that position their head so that when you put this on, it uh, touches here and touches here. That's the important thing. Okay. And then we just sort of, as we, as we glue it down, sort of work this way. So we now um, sort of peel it back until we see the glue where it's glued. Don't try and pull it back too far because if it's dried it will actually cause issues where it can actually hurt the skin. So You never want to start from the outside in because if you don't do it perfectly and chances of doing it perfectly are almost impossible. Um, you'll end up with extra stuff in the middle and uh, it's just going to look like garbage. Now, if you get some little bits here, your edge along the top edge doesn't have to be perfect because the prosthetics going to come over and blend blend off onto there, so um, you don't really have to worry too much about that edge. Um, and if he's going to be wearing armor or a shirt or something, then we don't need to worry about that either. If he's going to be doing the bare chest thing, then this edge here needs to be laid down really carefully and blended well. So. To fix, but that's okay because then it gets me to be able to teach you guys how to do that. Hold your head straight. Yeah. It's much harder to apply this if the head is bent because it throws off the throws off the alignment. Too much dried glue on this brush already. Just 
going to get some alcohol on a Q-tip. Just re reposition that. There we go. So it's just a matter of uh, some alcohol and a Q-tip that actually turned under. So we're just going to get the Q-tip under and then we just spin them to unroll it. Yep, just like that. Just need to, the, the glue will be deactivated by the alcohol and then it's just a matter of spinning it. Now if they were curled up over like this, up onto itself, then you would spin it this way and if they're underneath you spin it this way. So it just depends on which way you are needing to unroll it. But, uh, Some of these wrinkles and stuff along here, I'm not going to worry too much about. Okay, I'm just going to stretch that out a little bit like that. Now, something I forgot to mention in the rundown of all the products was the no color powder. Uh, so I'm just going to take some powder on one of these wedges and I'm just going to powder along that edge because I don't want it to be sticky because then it's just going to stick to his singlet and it's just going to be a pain in the bum. And if at any time you need to press down something, just put a little bit of powder on your finger and you'll be able to just sort of press it down and it'll be fine. We'll just keep going on this side now. Getting all of this glued down and blended, blended off nicely. And we've got quite a bit of wrinkles and stuff going on here. It's going to need a little bit of. TLC. A little bit of special attention. Now again, if if we're doing this and he's going to be wearing a shirt, because many of them wear those shirts with the weird sort of shoulder pads, they're like, I don't know, it's like they've got budget costumes for the White Walkers, they're all wearing exactly the same shirt and I, I don't think, I personally don't love that about the show, um, when all the other costumes are so gorgeous, the White Walkers are kind of, kind of lackluster. I much prefer the guys that have no shirts, I think that, no, that sounded, I much prefer the look of the characters when they've got the full body makeup. down these wrinkles that happened. It's looking much better. It actually blends in pretty good with your chest colour. You pale bugger. <laughs> Yeah. 
And I'm not really worried about that top edge at all because it's going to be it's going to be covered up. Alrighty, now let's do the face. Can breathe okay through your nose. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So you want to make sure that it's going to fit right before you start gluing it down. That they can breathe. That it lines up with their eyes properly. That it blends into their lip properly. And I think we're I think we're in good shape. So what I normally do is uh, the, the lining up with the lip is pretty important. And if we know that it's not really far off. Some people have a really long face, a really long area between the nose and their lip, and uh, that can be somewhat problematic when it comes to fitting generic appliances onto them, um, just because they end up with a lip halfway down their lip, and that looks really stupid. So, so I'm just kind of going to anchor this through the middle. all the way down through the middle. I'm going to leave the everything from the eyes up unglued right now. So I'm going to take this going to make sure it blends in with the the upper lip. Then I'm going to make sure it's sitting on the lower lip. And we're going to hook this up between the eyes here to make sure that that's going to fit properly as a feeling. Now we're going to just get in under here and just kind of do like we do on the neck. We're just going to gradually work. You know, if the glue's here, we're going to work it out here, push it down, then we'll peel it back to here, put some more glue on, so that the whole thing gets gets glued. We don't want to have any areas that don't actually have glue, because uh, it, it moves weird. If they do a certain thing, it can pucker weird and and just will undermine the, the character and the look of the makeup, which is never a good thing. These edges are going down a treat. Great. So just be really aware that as you pull this back, don't pull the, the prosthetic that's glued away from the skin, because uh, that will potentially cause damage to the skin. Which we certainly don't want. Some people like to apply glue with a Q-tip. Um, I personally am not one of them. I think it makes for a, a glue uh, application that's not necessarily even, and uh, I just don't think I just don't particularly think it's a good, good technique. Okay, just gonna put some glue on either side of the eyebrow, unless it's super close to the edge of the eyebrow. I typically do not put glue through the eyebrow. Just close your eyes. Um, 
just out of comfort for the actor because it sucks trying to get prosade out of your eyebrows. Now keep your eyes closed because you do have glue on your eyelids and the potential to glue your eyelids open is, uh, is high. And it's just a matter of taking your time and being thorough. Sometimes I will get some glue on a Q-tip just to get right in around the eyes here without throwing a big old, uh, big old brush up in there. Powder on the finger. I wasn't flipping you off. Or was I? So once we've managed to put the uh, powder in around the eyes, I'm just going to make sure that the eyelids uh, or the eyelashes aren't glued down. Can you open your eyes? Okay, good. And uh, now we just keep going. This rolled under on itself. Quite a bit of a roll under going up there, so for something like this, typically it would be uh, multiple pieces for a film production because it just makes it easier than trying to deal with this type of scenario. But for pieces that you buy, which usually easier for making them if they're just one piece so it means we just have to be able to deal with deal with the, uh, the issues Here we go. It's starting to treat me right now.
Now I'm going to have to, uh, that's kind of cutting his eye off a little bit, so I'm just going to pluck that out a little bit so that it can uh, not cover his eye because that sucks and it looks bad. And this particular sculpt I think can, can still sustain that. I don't think it's going to look bad. So the face is now on. So my apologies for that. Uh, we're at a point I can't really pull it off. So we're just going to keep going. But all of the edges blended down pretty nicely in the end. And uh, just got to work that lip a little bit. It's not really glued down and a little bit around the eyes. So I'm just going to close your eyes. I'm just going to take a little bit of Q-tip, uh, glue on a Q-tip and just work it in there to make sure that these are going to be glued down okay. I'm just going to leave that to dry because Prosaid works better if it's on both surfaces. It sticks much much more strongly. Now any glue that you put on the lips you're going to have to make sure you powder them, otherwise the lips will glue closed and that's going to be not pleasant. Okay, push this down, I think. Okay, and open your mouth. I'm just going to powder those lips down so that. Uh, It's all good and close your eyes. Now we're just going to make sure that these are kind of powdered in here. And we are all glued in. Let's, uh, let's look at getting some color onto this. So the first step we have to do when working with any foam latex appliance is we need to seal the foam. If any of you have used any of those makeup wedges, uh, you put makeup on it and it absorbs in and disappears from, from this reality. So uh, what we do is we put a layer of either Prosade uh, or Pax paint over the whole thing and then what that does is it seals the foam so it doesn't absorb anymore. So for this particular... For this particular... Um, Makeup, I'm going to use Pax Paint and I'm going to use this grey Pax that was in our kit. And I'm going to mix just a tiny bit of blue in with it. Okay. So, got the grey Pax and just a tiny bit of blue. Now, the problem, the problem with doing a White Walker makeup is that I believe that the makeups are actually mostly sort of grayscale. I don't think there's a lot of blue in them, but because they put this kind of blue, this like blue filter over everything when they're on um, when they're on screen, it's really hard to tell exactly what colors they are. So I'm just going to add a really, really slight sort of bluish tinge to the whole thing. So I'm now going to take this this packs that we have, I'm going to use one of my chip brushes because I want to get this into every little nook. Now I wouldn't necessarily use a brush like this straight on the skin. The bristles are quite harsh, but for 
something like this. Um, and also I, I wouldn't use it sort of up to the eyes. I'm just using it on the foam latex. And uh, and we just take that tax just ever so slightly over the edge. We don't want to use packs or really any alcohol-based product right around the eyes because uh, it's hard to remove and the removers have fumes and if they get in the eye it's awful and so it's just easier to use like rubber mask grease or even regular makeup for that matter for that. So we're almost done with paxing it out. I'm not going to pax in the ears, that's just mean. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to have to get a Q-tip in right around the eyes here just to get the pax at least up to the edge of the up to the edge of the prosthetic. So just close your eyes. We definitely want to make sure that that's all sealed. I'm going to be mixing up a same color in, in the rubber mask grease. So we'll blend off all of the, the eye at that time. Uh, but right now I just want to make sure I've sealed all of our, sealed all of our foam. So we don't have any, don't have any problems. Now, having so much deep texture in the sculpt is a good and a bad thing. It's great for us later on, but right now it's a bit of a pain because we need to make sure we go over everything and make sure we haven't missed any parts of it because uh, any parts that we miss are going to be quite visible. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so let's mix up our rubber mask grease color. I'm not going to throw this away because I'm going to use that as my as my uh, reference so that the color matches. Some gray. Just a little bit of this blue. And it's considerably darker. But that's okay. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna mix up a little extra of this because I like that color and I think I wanna use a little bit more of that in some of the some of the creases in prosthetic. Um, now many people ask can they just use a uh, regular grease paint makeup 
And what is the difference between rubber mask grease, sometimes referred to as appliance foundations or RMG for short? Uh, what's the difference? Well, the rubber mask grease doesn't have regular cosmetic oils. It has a, a castor oil base which doesn't break down the chemical composition of our um, of our foam appliance. Okay, so I'm just going to use this little brush here then we're just going to put this around the eyes. Close your eyes. It's not exactly the same colour but I think once we stipple in some white it will uh, end, up being, end up being okay. through this really kind of darkened shadowed in area here. So we're just sort of hitting the deepest spots and we're using that to kind of bring out the sculpt. Sorry, I forgot that it was just doing the same on the neck. <laughs> My bad. I'm fired at this. Okay. Now we're going to take one of our foam wedges and we're just going to do a little bit of a little bit of a blend job just to sort of blend out some of this uh, where it looked very very uh, sort of a stark contrast where it just sort of stopped. So you can see that's already looking much much better.
So I've mixed up just a lighter grey colour. I'm just going to kind of do the ears with that just because anything else would be kind of mean. It's not exactly the same colour, but I think once we put our shadow and our highlights and stuff in, I think it'll be close enough. Really would like a tiny bit of green to add into that to really, I suppose we could always just mix some of this in through, through here. into the face, I think it'll probably, there we go. Okay, just going to take our little puff applicator here. Look up. Okay, so I think we've got pretty good, pretty good coating on. So we're going to take our powder puff. And we're going to set that, set that all. No color powder. Because our next step is to go in with some white, and uh, I don't want that uh, picking up any of this grey. I want to keep it nice and white. Actually, our next step is to detail the ears because I totally forgot to do that. So <laughs> let me just get some of the shadow stuff, shadow colour in the ears. You can see that even just with the white powder, it actually has a pretty cool, pretty cool look. So. Actually, 
use our little powder brush to make sure that we brush away any excess powder. It's looking better. Just put some some texture in there. On the side, just throw some texture in. Okay, so our next step is to get some white. Rub mask grease. Now, the good part about it being so textured is that we can kind of We kind of do what's called dry sponging. And what that does is it just hits the uh, kind of high points of the sculpt. So you can see right away that's really bringing that sculpt out a lot and creating some great depth into those areas where, um, where we put that darker colour.
problems. Just got to be careful not to get any uh, of these edge marks on there because it will look awful. Now part of the trick also is to not go full value white all the way through here because we're wanting to really punch the white up just on the cheekbones and around the around the eye socket area. That's where we want it to be whitest and then down through here. But we do want a little bit of white on these just to bring out the sculpt. So it seems to be Working pretty well. Whoops, it's just a little too much. Oh, maybe not. It might be okay. You can see that I'm using the back of this to uh, kind of soften, soften down some of this. So we definitely want to use just a little bit through these darker spots just to bring out that sculpt. Um, we don't want it to be really full value white, but we don't want it to be just really dark, well, one color dark gray either, so this should... Uh, I'm just going to use the edge of this now just to put in some uh, put in some of those you can see that it's uh, sculpt fish is here so we can just kind of fudge in some of that uh, some of that detail just using our edge of our sponge So we're really only wanting to hit these kind of high points of the sculpt, we're not wanting to necessarily get too de deep down into there so you can kind of curl it like this and uh, it'll kind of hide those edges of the sponge.
you can see already how um, how much extra depth that's given to the sculpt. Looks pretty, pretty okay. Look up. A little bit more white under the eye. Do that with the uh, brush. Okay, so we're really just letting the sculpt do pretty much all of the work on this one, which is really easy, easy. So just need to give them another good powder. To set all of our white. Now if you don't want to use rubber mask grease for this, you can just use the, the white packs. You can do this whole thing with packs if you prefer. Um, it's a little more tricky to blend, but uh, certainly will work. So you're given that option in the kit. Adding some of the, the grey and white and kind of a mottle up into there because I want to try and run the hairline of our wig really high up.
I'm just going in with a really light spray of hairspray and what that does is it just kind of gets rid of the powderiness you can also use KY jelly works pretty well you can see that's really deepened in some of the some of the darker spots I like the smell of that one too plus you know Ozzy sorry Ah, see. <laughs> Forgot where I was for a minute. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to call that makeup. Mm. I want to call that makeup done, but uh, there's something about the eyes that aren't thrilling me. So I think I'm going to go in with just a tiny bit of, tiny bit of black rubber mask. Sorry, I'll use the grey. I don't have any black here. The dark grey, just straight on its own. Okay. Just to pop it just a little bit. Ah, that looks better. Looks better already. Close. Just... Yeah, when I added that white on the eyelids, it uh, lost some of the intensity of the blue. So I like having that slightly darker juxtaposition. Look up. Okay, so we've got our crepe hair here. So what we want to do is we want to kind of separate it out. So it's not so sort of clumped together. Okay. You see it's got just that little bit of kink to it, which I'm kind of digging for this. So we're going to put some more glue on our palette. And we're going to take that glue and we're going to run it right along this chin. And we're going to take some of this, we're going to tear it off because it's much easier to tear now that it's uh, not all clumped together. And spread it out so it's nice and, nice and even. We don't want any big obvious strands. I'm going to keep it nice and, nice and even. I'm going to fold that over. Like that. Then I'm going to cut it like this on an angle. And then I'm going to put that underneath. Again, spread it out, fold it over, cut it on 
go. Now the reason we're cutting it on the angle is so that when we put it underneath it sits coming forward so it doesn't just go straight down. We want it to come forward a little bit. And then we're going to lay some here that goes down this way so that it's got a more natural uh, feel to it. You can see that nice slight little kink sort of coming in which I like a lot. The angle that you cut hair on with when you're laying hair is absolutely crucial. It's one of the crucial things that most people overlook and uh, causes many problems to a lot of people's hair laying. Now we're going to trim it the other way, so it's an angle like that, and we're going to kind of spread it out a little bit because we want it to be kind of sparse, we don't want it to have a really strong beard line. There we go, that's looking, it's looking a little thick, we're going to thin it out and uh, probably trim it a little bit because I don't think he has quite that quite that bushy of a beard but I want to get all of this on first before we, uh, before we start tweaking with it yeah, so we've been just kind of thinning this out you can see that's kind of substantially thin, but I might add a little extra on the sides. I think it will look better if the beard sort of comes up a little more in front of the ears, maybe. looking much better. kind of wet that down and put it into a little kind of wet looking little clumps because that's kind of how it looked like he's been out in the ice so I'm just kind of
Okay. Now, that beard looks pretty much perfect compared to the reference photo I saw. So I'm quite happy with that. But I think I would like maybe just to punch up some of the white a little bit, a little bit more on uh, some of those really, really high points. So I'm going to get some of these white packs. Uh, yes, that's looking much better. Much better already. Yes, that's looking much nicer. I'm liking that much more. We'll pop a little packs on the ears, but because it's going on top of the grease paint, it's not going to kind of suck to get off. It should just come off with the grease paint. Yes, that's exactly what it needed. Okay, and I'm going to call it done. Now we just need the wig. And there we have it, the White Walker makeup, I would like that receding just a tiny bit more. There we go, let's put that up.
and we're done. Thanks for watching. Go over to FX Warehouse website and have a look at all the goodies they got there. They got some great stuff. And uh, pick up your White Walker makeup application kit. And you'll be able to do a, an awesome character makeup like this.